In this video I'm going to have a look at the number series set up in Business Central and walk you through all of the different features within that area. In Business Central look up number series and this will take you to the setup page. So every type of transaction or card file that is set up within Business Central needs to have some form of number series assigned to it. So let's just have a look, for example, at the general journals and we can have a look at the features associated with that. So you need to give it a code. Try and um, set them up with things that seem to be relevant overall and that will group like numbers together. Give it a name. And then to get the starting numbers, you click into, so we can see campaigns here don't have any starting numbers and that's what it would look like if you created a new one. If you click into the box, it gives you a background screen. So, in our journals. Now note, you've got the starting date. So, it does mean you can set up different numbering ranges for different date ranges and so forth. That might be relevant for things like GST returns. Um, or you might want to uh, do batches in certain ways that link to dates or similar where you might want to use a starting date. Otherwise, you're putting the starting number and an ending number. Um, I tend to use alpha on the front to help distinguish when you're looking at a, a pile of numbers in a general ledger transactions window. Um, and then six digits, regardless of the document type. The last date used and last number used will populate automatically as you start using them. And you can also put in a warning number so that you don't run out of numbers. So we could add in, for example, um, 9999, nine, uh, let's go 800. So that means when you've got 200 numbers left, it's going to warn you. Depending on transaction volumes for a site, that might not be enough. What you're incrementing your numbers by. And this is a key one, allowing gaps in numbers. So auditors don't really like to see things like gaps in journal numbers. So if you tick that box, it does mean that you are allowed to have gaps in numbers and it will lose sequences. So for most um, documents that allow gap numbers will be um, unticked. If we go back to our main screen, then we've got um, other settings over here. So this default numbers, you want to tick that if you want the numbers to automatically populate on the transaction they're linked to. Manual numbers, you tick if you um, are allowed to enter manual numbers, and you can have both of those ticked, like up here for the customer numbers. You might have a default number sequence, but you actually allow manual setup as well. And that would be most common on things like customers, vendors, and items. Uh, date order I haven't played with. Uh, apparently it would it would check to make sure that numbers are signed chronologically. That to me seems like it could cause more problems than it would solve. Um, if you were posting, you know, journals into a prior period as well as a current period, I think that could end up causing problems. The other thing that you can do in here is um, you can link numbers together. So if we go down to the item for example, and I create a um, new item number. Um, and I'm going to call this one raw materials. Right. So let's put a number sequence in our items. Um, Right, and so this one I'm also going to default my numbers and I'm, and I'm going to have manual numbers. Now on my raw materials one, I'm actually, I'm going to give that a number sequence of Okay, so now what you can do is you can come up to the related series and relationships and you can pick up and say um, that for 
item, I'm also going to link in item REM. Now, what that does, after it refreshes, is if I go to my items and I create a new one, see now I've got two different options coming up and this is linking into templates. If I select my first one, it's picked up my default numbers, but if I want to, I can drop in the background here and I can change my number sequence and say, actually, I want to use the RM number sequence and it will pick up the next RM number. So it gives you the ability to have uh, different number sequences attached to the same area. Uh, if you go ahead and set up templates at a later stage, which I'll do a video on at some point, um, you can then link those to be the default numbers against the templates. That should be what you need to set up your number series and make them work for your situation.